It happens to me all the time that women come to me with a very similar question. And that question is some version of how do I know if I'm on the right track? So women will ask me, how do I know if I'm doing the right things to meet the right man? How do I know if this relationship is something that could potentially lead to marriage? How do I know if I'm doing the things that I need to do in order to heal from my past relationships? Hey love, I am Keisha Rice, dating coach for ambitious, successful Christian women. And today I want to talk to you about the one question that you should constantly be asking yourself. So this question actually came about as something that as a dating coach who follows a fair number of business coaches when it comes to growing my business and making sure that I am serving women like you the way that I should, the question that gets thrown at me all the time is, does this support the life that I'm trying to create? And that is the question that I want you to ask when it comes to dating and relationships. Does this support the life that I am trying to create? Because let's break that down into some concrete examples. For example, if you want to be a woman who is happily married, then does hanging out with women who are miserably single support creating that life? Realistically, because if you are surrounding yourself with women who all they ever talk about is men are trash, all men are dogs, all men are cheaters. That is going to sink into your spirit. It's going to get into your spirit. You are going to feed into that. And because you are constantly feeding into that, everything that you see, more specifically, every man that you see is run through that filter. You will constantly attract the men who have those bad qualities that you and your aunties, your friends, your mom, whoever keep talking about. So being around women who are single and miserable, being around women who are married and miserable, being around women who are constantly saying negative things about love, dating, relationships, and men, this does not support the life that you are trying to create. And I get that this is hard if, say, all of your friends are like that, all of the women in your family are like that. If that's the case for you, you need to change the topic whenever that comes up. So just no more talking about dating and men. It needs to be about getting your money, securing the bag. It needs to be about God. It needs to be about shopping, anything other than dating and relationships. You can also choose to just stop being around those people, period. Oftentimes, if someone is negative in one area, they're negative in a lot of other areas. And it comes time to find people in your circle who support the life that you're trying to create, whether that is meeting those women in person or finding women online who can be role models and mentors for, for you, even if that's not in person, even if that's just through watching their videos and reading their posts. So when you talk about this idea of, does this support the life that I'm trying to create? You know, a common one that I see with a lot of women is they say that they want to be in a relationship with a man who is healthy. And by healthy, I mean mentally and emotionally. He's emotionally intelligent. Um, he's not toxic and full of drama. But they keep seeing men and dating men who are full of toxicity and drama. And I get that if this is your pattern, if you have a long history of attracting men like that, it takes time to fall out of that pattern. It really does. But that being said, getting into the, into the relationship is one thing. Choosing to stay in it is another. And sometimes I see women who are so afraid of being alone 
that they will settle for whatever it is they currently have or make some type of excuse to make it better. So he didn't beat me like the last guy. You know, he may be emotionally and verbally abusive, but at least he's not physically abusive. So I've come up a little bit in relationships because I'm no longer with someone who is physically abusive. Or he may take advantage of me when it comes to taking advantage of my time, expecting me to drop things to do stuff for him or to help him out with something. But, you know, in the past, I dated men who used me for money. So it's, it's better because, you know, at least that's not happening. If you allow men like that to stay in your life, if you tolerate toxic relationships, what will happen is you will constantly attract more and more of them. So stop doing that. <laughs> The second that you see you are in a relationship that is going to be toxic or problematic, get out of the relationship. Again, when it comes to this idea of does this support the life that I'm trying to create, that's the question that you should be asking yourself. If you want to meet a man and fall in love and have that healthy, cherished relationship, you have to be in a position to meet men. So, you know, I know coronavirus is still happening. <laughs> and for some places, you are still under lockdowns. Some of you are voluntarily under a lockdown. Your state, your country, your city may be reopening, but you are not going out. I'm personally in that position myself right now. And if that's the case, then, yeah, I get that it's harder for you to physically go out, but the internet still exists. If you are watching me, it is proof that the internet still exists. <laughs> and there are dating apps, there are dating sites. In 2020, there is no excuse not to be putting yourself out there to meet men. And, you know, God is a lot of things, but Disney fairy godmother is not one of them. So you are not going to run into a situation where if you stay home all the time and watch TV and stay off the internet and you're not getting on apps and online dating sites, if you're not making any sort of effort to put yourself out there, back to Disney, you are not a Disney princess. Prince Charming is not going to break into your house and introduce himself and marry you. You have to be willing to do that. So when you ask yourself, does this support the type of life that I'm trying to create? It becomes important to not only look at your past relationships and the pattern of men that you've dated and the type of men that you've attracted, but what about yourself as well? What is it about you that has allowed yourself to attract whatever situation you are in right now? So that may be you've never dated, you've never been in a serious relationship because you've never put yourself out there. You've always been too shy or too afraid to do so then that needs to change. You need to become the type of woman who puts herself out there and who puts herself in position to meet men. I hear this said all the time that, well, I'm not going to chase men. You know, I'm not going to do that because the man is supposed to come to me. And yes, the man is supposed to pursue a relationship with you. However, you know, oftentimes men are just as terrified of talking to us as we are to them. So there is nothing wrong with starting a conversation. There is nothing wrong with, again, putting yourself out there and being in positions to be found. If you think of that verse, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, then it means two things. One, before you are found, you must be a wife. You must have prepared yourself to be a wife. That means that you have healed from your past toxic relationships. You're no longer stuck on someone in your past. It means that you have done the things to be the type of woman a wife needs to be, supportive, nurturing, and caring. So you no longer have these negative attitudes and you're in a position of being jaded and thinking that men are dogs or thinking that no man wants to really take care of you. If you are a wife, you know You are worthy of love, you deserve love, and you expect to be treated with respect and to be loved and cherished. So part of it is, one, you must be a wife to start with, and two, you must be found. So again, if you are constantly 
hey Phyllis, if you are constantly on your couch at home and you're not going anywhere and you're also not getting on a dating app or not getting on a dating website, then you are not in position to be found. So because you are not in position to be found, you are not going to be a wife. Again, ask yourself, does this support the life that I'm trying to create? You know, this is no different from any other area in your life. If your goal is to be debt free, constantly spending money before you get it does not support that life that you're trying to create. If your goal is to lose 20 pounds, constantly eating chocolate <laughs> does not support the life that you're trying to create. So the same thing goes with dating and relationships. If you want to be in a healthy, loving marriage, then constantly allowing people in your life, whether that is family members, church members, friends, co-workers, anyone in your life to treat you like trash or to be unfair to you, to take advantage of you, that does not support the life that you're trying to create. If everyone in your life is taking advantage of you, what makes you think that a husband's going to be different? So that's where setting boundaries comes in. If you are, again, hiding away and not putting yourself out there, that does not support the life that you're trying to create of happy wife. If you are pining over an ex and the relationship ended a long time ago, that does not support the life of being a happy wife. If you are never giving men a chance and you're never opening yourself up and being vulnerable because some man messed with your heart and broke your heart years ago, that does not support the life that you're trying to create. You have to heal. You have to be willing to be vulnerable in order to have a happy, healthy marriage. So again, the one question that you need to constantly ask yourself is, does this support the life I am trying to create? So thank you guys for watching, for sticking around to the end. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section. If you're watching live, say hello. If you're watching this on the replay, then say replay so I can come back and say hello to you later. And I will talk to you all soon. Love you so much.